Solitude. I always thought that solitude would bother me. I believed that the discomfort of life at sea and the fatigue resulting from days of sleep deprivation would eventually take its toll and leave me feeling lonely and looking forward to finally arrive. Especially since on my fourth day of sailing between Cape Verde and Antigua, Spotify blocked my access to any music or podcast that I had downloaded. But to my surprise, after 10 days at sea on my own, I am finding a groove that I never thought would be possible. And while I take full measure of the risk that I am taking by being alone in the middle of the ocean, Polar Seal and I are forming a special bond that only exists after spending so much time and effort keeping each other safe. Yes, even the manliest men of sailors must shave every once in a while. But it keeps my face fresh and hair free along the way. This is my twice a day, slow, slow, slow activity. Oh yeah, nice one today. Making a little din din for my bin bin, my tummy bin, that is. A little taco salad tonight. Some nights everything just works and some nights like one little thing changes but you don't know what it is and it just throws the whole operation into disarray. Last night like the boat was just rocking around like hell. Like I didn't have a lot of speed, I didn't there wasn't anything I could really do about it. It was just like rocking and to the point that like I'm a little bit seasick this morning and considering putting on another patch. Whoever designed this. So just as it's starting to rain, the bimini is ripping. Uh, so you can see here, it's all coming apart. And this is a, kind of a standard problem we're having with the boat. It's also ripping here on this zip. We keep the bimini up all the time and it's just, exposed to the UV rays, and the UV rays are, um, well, they're essentially eating all the, the line. It's raining, I'm gonna go downstairs anyways. I'm gonna take it down, do some sewing this afternoon. I guess that's what I'll be doing today. Our spray hood, bimini, and full enclosure were the first upgrade we ever made to Polar Seal when we bought her in 2016. But after six years of heavy use in the unforgiving sun of the tropics, the UV thread is starting to break down. Not easy. I'm just gonna do the whole thing, I guess, way faster than hand stitching, which I have done on a lot of this campus. Good morning, world. Uh, got a tanker problem at 6 a.m. The motor tanker Tanja is uh, like got a CPA of a mile and I'm sure it's hard for them because I am unable to keep a very steady course or speed because we've got really gusty winds this morning. I think I'm gonna have to call them pretty soon because they're not altering course at all which annoys me a little. Here we are, here they are, it's about 10 miles, it still says still says a mile 
less than a mile. I don't like that. I don't like that there's nothing been done. So it's still got 30 minutes. I usually wait till 20 minutes. So in about 10 minutes, I'll give them a call. To see if they've done anything, but they haven't as of now. Speed's the same. Course is the same. You can barely see the ship fucking swell so big. I just took a little head sail out, but I'm just looking off to the north here. Amazing weather today. Sophie arrives in Antigua today. And I just wish I was waiting for her, not the other way around, because it's been a really long few months, month and a half of doing this. I'm gonna take out a little bit of head sail here and see if we can get a little more speed and yeah. Tomorrow's pizza day. All right, all right, Sunday fun day. Sunday is also pizza day. It's also cleaning day. The sun has finally come out, kind of. Now I'm starting to feel the, the tropical heat, which is fine that it waited this long. This is kind of my desk here. Just needs a little picky up. And my bed, which is a little bit of a disaster. V-Birth has turned into a room where you just throw stuff. This is Monique, she needs a little water today. And then uh, our aft cabin needs a little bit of, just pick me up too, kind of a bit destroyed there. And the bathroom, you can't smell it, but if you could, you'd understand why it's cleaning day. <laughs> so, let's get at it. And just like that, cleaning's done. It's not perfect, but it helps. I think the boat looks pretty good now. It just looks, feels a little better. And the bathroom, it smells just a little better. It's hot as hell down here, so I'm gonna go upstairs, do a little R&R, &R, and then pizza night in a few hours. Hi, Mom. Can you hear me now? <laughs> oh, that's good, that's good. How are you guys? So for the second time in two days, this is happening. Motor tanker, less than a mile. It's a huge freaking ocean. How is this happening? And why is he not altering his course? Anyways, I'm gonna give him a call. Cargo ship Nada, Nada, Nada. This is sailing vessel Polar Seal, Polar Seal, Polar Seal, channel 16, over. Yes, good evening, sir. I just wanna make sure you can see me. I'm about five miles off your bow, over. Okay, I don't know what you're saying. So, cargo vessel Nada, your transmission is broken and unreadable. I'm just going to hold my course. I would appreciate it if you could go uh, behind me on my stern while passing me over. Okay. Seems that crisis has been averted. He has gone behind me, even though I didn't know that that's what he was gonna do. He did, thank God. It's been uh, 14 days at sea now. And as is tradition, I don't know if it's really a tradition, but as is tradition on the Polar Sea of the last few days, we always do a lot of baking to make the time go fast. And I'm not the world's best baker, but today I'm gonna bake. It's gonna be magnificent. It's gonna be exceptionally wonderful. You're gonna learn so much on the Ryan Ellison Baking Channel Corner aboard Polar Seal. So let's get at it. So the first thing we need to do is get the oven prepped. So we're gonna take out the uh, dishes. We're gonna need this baking sheet here. This is our dish drawer locker. It's filled with toilet paper and paper towels. Let's see, this is our mugs. Oh God. 
can't shut it. <laughs> it's filled with my t-shirts. Okay. With this here, time to preheat the oven. All right, that did not work. Next thing we need, I think, is a bowl. Sophie always gets a bowl out. So we're gonna get a bowl out. Oh, don't go anywhere. So she always has a bowl and then some flour. This is a family secret on how to make the dough for this. So I can't show the world, but it involves flour and love, uh, I think. So hold on. What a! Look at that. In less than two minutes, I made canal burra. I am a genius. I'm gonna just put these on the mat. Ryan's baking time takes way less than Sophie's. I just want everybody to know that. And I used almost no flour. Really, I uh, am a genius when it comes to cooking in the kitchen. I can make things happen very fast. If I'm given the proper tools, such as an IKEA bag of pre-made poop. Let's put these guys in. Let's see how my great concoction turned out. Oh, look at that scrumptious goodness. Oh, now we let those cool. I did all that baking in 20 minutes. And no mess, just yummy goodness. I'm questioning myself if I left those in long enough. We'll find out. Maybe a little doughy, but they're good. Mm. These are good. It is a really nice day today. I wish the winds would just be a little bit higher and we could sail all the way in. The sun is shining. There's not as many squalls as yesterday. So nice. I have one project I need to do in these two weeks on the boat. And that is our Swedish flag looks like poo. It's molded, it is ripping, uh, and on most of the videos you'll see, uh, you will have not seen the Swedish flag because I cannot stand the thing flapping while we're under passage for weeks and weeks on end. So when I was in Stockholm last time, I picked up a new Swedish flag. Uh, we usually get a new one about once a year and I thought it would be good if we saved it until this passage was over and we could come into port with a crisp, new, shiny Swedish flag. And this one is very crisp and new and shiny. may need to retie that, but looking good. I can honestly say this is the first like hot day. When Sophie and I crossed last time, it was really sunny the whole way and it was hot the entire way. So maybe that's a bit of a blessing of having a bit of a cloudy passage. It hasn't been terribly hot, but it's hot today. I'm not feeling very good because of it. Okay, so we've got Antigua, Q flag and the American flag all ready to go. And we'll hoist those tomorrow morning as to not getting beat up too much tonight. I've heard this happening before, I never thought it would happen to me, but I'm out coiling lines and I look over and there is a sh no shit bird sitting on a lifeline like 10 centimeters from me and it scared the hell out of me. I think he's still here. He's looking really tired. Yeah, you can just hang out for a while, all right? He's probably pretty tired. He just doesn't care. I was literally sitting right next to him, didn't notice. I look over and I was like, holy fuck. And I yelled and he didn't move or anything. So he must be really tired. Just don't come in the boat. I'm less than 24 hours from hitting the dock, maybe 18 hours. And 
I don't know what it's gonna be like. Um, I was happy to get in Cape Verde to meet people. Now I'm gonna be in, happy to get to to Antigua to step foot on land, see surroundings, kiss the ground, go to the beach and hug my girlfriend. <laughs> I think it's gonna be a totally different emotional f thing. The rationale I had for doing this was I wanted to know emotionally and mentally what it was like to do a trip like this by yourself. I didn't care about crossing the finish line. I didn't care about saying I've done it or checked it off a bucket list. I wanted to know what the feeling was of being in solitude like this for so long. And I think that I got Godsmacked doing that. Um, there's actually a band named Godsmacked and that's where the name comes from is the idea that God can just smack you across the face. And I think that that happened and it happened very, very quickly. I thought maybe something would happen halfway, maybe something would break, maybe emotionally I couldn't handle being out here this long by myself. And it wasn't it, you know, I was given the opportunity to show very quickly if I was somebody willing to lend a hand. Um, and that was a lot for me to take. And then what do you do with the project after something like that had to, I thought my biggest challenge would be the, the abilities to control the fact that I can't go any faster and I might just want to be there. I thought that that feeling, that frustration feeling of getting there, get there-itis, would be with me for days. I thought I was going to be struggling with that, screaming about that, and it didn't happen, surprisingly. It did happen for a day, maybe a day and a half. But that was it, and it was way shorter than I thought it was gonna be. And I think that came down to some mental preparation I had given myself saying like, I know this is gonna happen, this is typically how you work, Ryan. You need to be prepared for that. And I think that that helped a lot. I think the other thing that helped is that I had pretty good wind and sailing conditions, so the boat kept moving. I think I'd be way more frustrated than the one day that I got really frustrated was the day that the wind just was not cooperating with me. And it felt like we're just, you know, out there floating. I think the biggest challenge sailing-wise I'm gonna have is yet to come, and that is uh, arriving at the customs dock in Antigua. And now I'm gonna um, moor up by myself. I think I'm gonna call for some help. <laughs> So uh, it's, that's quite ironic, you know, you sail 2,200 miles and then like the worst part is like the, the last 10 feet, but oh, whatever. Hi Ryan, we can't wait to see you. Yeah, I'm so looking forward to it. It should be great. We're gonna have a great time. You need to decide what you want for your coffee meal, if you want pizza or a burger or what you want so you can find a restaurant. Oh, that's such a hard one, a pizza or a burger. Uh, I don't know. You have to surprise me. You want a burger on the pizza? No, 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 no. That's sac that's sacrilegious. We'll see you then. All right, we'll see you tomorrow. Love you, bye. See you, bye. Pretty exciting. It's uh, four in the morning. The motor's on, we're only got about eight knots of wind. I can see the lights of Guadalupe over here and I can see the lights shining on the clouds of Antigua. <laughs> it's a pretty cool feeling. Uh, I've gone through this strait before um, so I kind of generally know where I am. Um, yeah, it's pretty cool. Sun is rising behind me and I can see land. I can smell land. I was looking at the tracker a lot last night and uh, that's a long freaking ways to go. Whether you're with two people or 20 people in a little floating bathtub in the ocean, and I just did it by myself. <laughs> it's always really tiring the first day 
<clears throat> on the day you arrive because you, you don't sleep well when you're arriving and I was up pretty, I think I just slept a few hours last night because I was up just watching out for fishing boats and stuff through the uh, Guadalupe Channel here. So it's going to be a very emotional day because I'm tired, I'm emotional, <laughs> it's going to be interesting. <laughs> yeah. When we arrived last time, I remember we got there in the morning kind of like this, uh, although I think we pulled into the dock about uh, 8 or 9 in the morning. And there's a smell in the air. It's not something that you can describe in any way, but you can smell land. I did not smell that <clears throat> when we went to the Azores, so I was really wondering if that was just like a unique thing that we experienced the, the last time, or if it's something that genuinely happens every time. And I smell it again. It's like the warm air and the the dirt and the flowers and the like the humidity. I don't, it's it's something really special. This is so cool. in English Harbor and Ryan is just arriving. He is between Guadeloupe and Antigua right now. We are not anchored at the place where he will actually make landfall. So we need to go. The problem is that Ryan has been a little fast. We did not expect him to arrive that early. So, so there is a slight chance that Ryan arrives before us. It's been really interesting this morning. I've been like, I've been super emotional. I've been like crying. I've been uh, screaming for joy. I've been laughing. I finally got some music back. Uh, just fucking incredible. I fucking did it. <laughs> uh, two weeks ago in uh, Cape Verde, I really didn't think I was gonna go. And then I said to myself, I like kept visualizing me actually ending up here really cool okay all right so it is currently 10 a.m uh, let's see where Ryan is I'll try to find him on vessel finder uh, I am slightly scared that he's gonna be a little bit ahead of us ah. oh shit he's back there fuck wow what a boat! What a ship! What a crew! Oh wow, we have some catching up to do! and the guys just came by and into the mystic and <laughs> it's, it's just it's just a flood of emotions and they can come out in many different ways it could be anger it could be laughter it could be happiness uh, mine is just coming out in tears Step off here. <laughs> oh, yeah. Made it! Woo! 
<laughs> Alright, let's go pick up Brian! Well done, Ryan! Woo! What a triumph! Oh, man, it's been a long time. Here is good job, Ryan. Yes! Nice job, Ryan. My solo journey might be over, but Sophie and I are just now gearing up for some exciting adventures that are going to take us all over the world. So don't forget to subscribe if you've enjoyed this series. I've said it a lot, but I was not alone over the course of this passage, so I want to give a big shout out to our patrons who are with me in real time throughout the whole journey. I could not have done it without you, nor could we have produced these videos. I also want to give a big shout out to all of you who watched our videos and provided me a lot of encouragement when I was at my lowest. Through all of you, we were able to raise $1,000 for the United Nations Refugee Relief Fund. We did this through revenues from our videos, but also through our Explore Humanity t-shirts, which you can still get until the end of May. If you're interested in this, there's a link below that will take you to our website and you can get one before they're gone. Also, a big shout out to my weather router, Charlie, from myweatherrouter.com, Andy Shell, Stephen Lancaster, and as always, Sophie Darcy, I love you. There will be no video next week, but we will go live where we debrief the crossing and answer all of your questions, so stay tuned for more information about that. But until next time, bye-bye. In the middle of the Atlantic, Ryan calls me on the sad phone. He's like, can you go on the internet, can you Google how to warm up the frozen mashed potatoes? When you open the bag, it was like little pellets of things in it. Yes, that's it how... It didn't make any sense. How do you think mashed potato frozen comes in? I don't know, I've never really thought about it. <laughs>